So I was going through some old newspapers and I actually found a runaway notice uh, for a slave from Kentucky who allegedly escaped, according to his master who placed the ad, with a slave collar on his neck and um, was uh, alleged to have been going towards the Ohio River. Now, if he had a slave collar on his neck, which is the contraption you'll see on the right here, um, that was put on people who either threatened to escape or people who had done it before and were captured or returned. It was meant to keep you from getting into the woods. Uh, the hooks would catch on vines and whatnot. And I thought, what if I tried to follow any information, any points of this man's journey through this one ad? So I had a picture, uh, uh, not this one, but actually a photo of a man wearing it. I took it to a blacksmith and gave it to him. He gave me a very awkward look. And I told him that I wanted him to replicate it. Um, he said, sure. He uh, demanded $150. And three days later, he called me and said, your thing is ready. <laughs> I went to pick up my thing. And before I tell you the end of that story, I'm going to demonstrate the thing. Could I get my volunteers? Now, this is a replica of a slave collar, and after I do my demonstration, I'll pass it around. We'll do show and tell. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to stand right here. You, sir, can stand right here. You stand where you are. I use a simple nut and bolt to keep this closed. And gentlemen, you're going to reach down and pick it up, and you're going to open it up. That's right. You, sir, are going to put your finger over your Adam's apple. We hope your neck is not too thick for this, and we hope we don't clip you. Okay, hold on one second. Are you all right? I'm okay, sir. Okay, close it. Is it pinching you? Not yet. Good. Remove your finger, and I want you to put your hands on both of these bars that are extending in front of you. I will just get this on so it doesn't fall off. To date, this has never gotten stuck on anyone, so <laughs> we will hope. <laughs> and my volunteers, please stand to the side, but do not sit down. OK, so I'm going to tell the rest of the story. Um, are you OK? Great. Um, this was put on, uh, on a person um, to keep them from getting into the woods. If you traveled with this, first of all, you'd stick out like a sore thumb. People would know you did something wrong. Um, you could not lay down or sleep with this. But in my mind, I had it all figured out. Um, I had seen in the woods at times where trees had fallen and were leaning up against other trees at an angle. I figured I'd wear it, uh, straddle the tree, and get a good night's sleep. I figured that if I came face to face with any danger, I could just simply take one of the prongs and you know, fight off the wild animal or whatnot. Or um, if I crossed a stream and I got wet, I could take off my clothes, put them on the prongs, and keep on running. <laughs> so I had it all figured out. I go, I pick it up, um, the man's assistants put it on my neck, and I instantly realized that I could not go on my journey wearing this thing. The reason being, if I tripped and fell, the prongs would hit the ground first, and my neck would break. That was my $150 history lesson. My other one was I paraded around in this for 20 minutes having pictures taken and then was in bed for the next three days with a sore neck and shoulders. So we're going to take that off of you. But before we do, how do you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. You know, very uncomfortable. If, if you stay in there for 20 minutes, a half hour, Thank you. And we can get a round of applause for our volunteer here. Thank you very much.